Uh, as you know, if you've been uh, connecting with this series at all, you know we've been kind of in this series called You, Discovering You and Christ in You. And so today we're going to continue in this series in a little bit of a different way. So in case you uh, haven't discovered about me, I'm a creature of habit. Once I find a pattern that I like, I can kind of lock into it and it makes me feel safe and happy and knowing what the next few weeks even look like. So what we've done already in this series is we've talked about the first three types uh, and we looked at people in the Bible and we've looked at people around here that kind of have some of those same personality traits and then I brought all three of them on stage and we talked to those folks who have some of those personality traits. Today we are going to do the same thing. And so we are going to do a little bit of a mini interview uh, with three people today. Over the course of the last few weeks, we have been uh, talking about people in the Bible that we think probably land in the heart triad of the Enneagram. So type two helpers, these people that just perpetually want to help, feel the need, they have to help people around them. And uh, we love those folks, even sometimes when their motives for helping Maybe a little skewed sometimes, but we love these folks. And we talked about the type three achievers a few weeks ago. We talked about the rich young ruler uh, in the New Testament that kind of just had to have it all figured out, was very successful, uh, but at the end of the day, some of the motives there sometimes could go askew depending on what was going on in their life as well. And last week we talked about the type four individualist or the type four feeler that just feels all the emotions feels everyone's emotions, feels their own, feels yours, and makes many of their decisions based on those feelings. And lots of times, that works out in a beautiful way. And sometimes, it doesn't. Welcome to the club. We all uh, struggle sometimes with our decision making. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk to uh, these three folks a little bit more specifically today. So I'm going to ask, uh, I've invited a type 2 helper and a type 3 achiever and a type 4 individualist uh, to join me on stage today. So if you folks can come right now, that would be fantastic. I'm going to ask my type 2 helper to sit here. Yeah, feel free. They're brave. Type 3 in the middle and... The last panel? That's not on. The last panel had a couch. I'm glad the microphone wasn't on. <laughs> Can we get that couch up here? All please? right. So, so Steph made it clear to us that my uh, I, I'm not I'm not caring for the heart triad people in the same way that I did last time. I will own that for sure. So, uh, so I love these moments where we get to see the beauty of the way the body of Christ has been put together. It's beautiful stuff to see. So today uh, we're going to talk specifically, firstly, to uh, my friend Jeff, and we're going to talk about what it means to be a type 2 helper. And so when we looked at the type 2 helper, we talked about the biblical story of uh, Mary and Martha. Many of us will be familiar with that story. If you're not, uh, go back a few weeks on our YouTube page uh, and check it out. And so uh, I've known Jeff for, for some time, uh, for, for some years, and one of the things that I've learned about Jeff, I love about Jeff, uh, Jeff is the helper. I, I know that. I knew that about this man long before I ever knew anything about this. Uh, just by being a friend with Jeff, I kind of knew that if there was ever a thing that needs to be done, there's a help piece, uh, Jeff's going to show up. I, I remember when Yvonne and I were putting in our like our 24-foot above ground pool in the backyard that YouTube said was going to be easy to do. It wasn't easy to do. It was an absolute nightmare. And who's there, 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, helping us to do this? Uh, Jeff and Sonia, of course, but the type 2 helper was there because that's what type 2 helpers do. So Jeff, it's a great to be a friend of yours, and thanks for being here today. So um, as we kind of Think about the biblical perspective of these folks. And as you heard the teaching on, on Mary and, and Martha, Mary kind of sitting there receiving, Martha was the, doing all the helping and stuff. What was going on in your mind as you were hearing that? What parts of that biblical story resonated with you as you were sitting there hearing it? Good morning. 
I think for myself, it was very, uh, almost a direct parallel to days when we have family over and stuff like that. I'm always on the barbecue cooking or getting stuff ready or trying to take care of things and make sure everybody's got something. I won't have something to eat until everybody's got food. Mm. It, uh, so it, <laughs> pretty close parallel to, uh, to what was going on there, other than I didn't complain to Jesus, but that was, right. uh, <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's, it's very much, yeah, where my heart is, I guess. I mean, it's, uh, I always just want to make sure that everybody's taken care of and, and that if I see anything that anybody needs, you're, you're on it. Mm. This is not like, I didn't prepare you for this, but you love me enough. I know I can get off with this. No. So in the story, right, Martha's buzzing around, doing all the stuff, making sure everyone's looked after. And she kind of gets annoyed when Mary's just kind of sitting there, kind of like receiving from the barbecue, to use your analogy, right? So it's there. It's kind of like, how come I'm like the only one helping around here? Are there times that you feel that way? Yeah. I think and remember, so. God's listening, so be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, that's one of the things that um, I have to guard against mm. is, is uh, getting frustrated. Why, why can't people see that this needs to be done? Mm. Why are people all standing around talking and this has to be done, that has to be done, that has to be done? Mm. And you end up running around with that. And, and, and it can get frustrating, even in my work life and stuff, the same kind of thing. If I see all the stuff that needs to be done and... People are walking by it or just completely oblivious to it. I'm like, why don't people see this? You know, so I need to guard against that frustration. And, and a lot of times, um, it's it's tough becomes or because you tend to take that out on the people you love. Mm. You know, and, and that's what I find. And I you know Sonia understands this sometimes. My frustration stuff that don't say amen, Sonia. No. Right now she's going. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. Uh, it's something I have to guard against because, you know, it's, I got to remember why I'm doing it because just to want to help and to want to support people and, and be there for people. So that frustration is something that I really um, have to keep in check and, and make sure and recognize that about myself. So, so this comes from, so you've obviously had uh, some time to reflect on this. Uh, this is something generally that type 2 helpers just don't intuitively know. They grow into health. So, so you've noticed over the years that you, you'll get frustrated about this, and I'm sure there were times in your life where you've acted out on it. You, you've called it. You've said to someone, hey, what, like, what are you doing sitting there? Like, you should be up doing this. And you've grown into health, I assume. Yes. You'll st and you still have your moments where it'll come out, and you'll, as it's coming out, you'll want to be pushing it back in. I need the Don Cherry three-second delay. Yes. So, so that's for sure a part of the beauty and the brokenness, right, of the type two helper. And so you've definitely, as you said, you have to work hard against that. As you kind of think about, Jeff, um, how you experience God, your, your personal relationship with God as a, as a type two helper. One of the pieces about a type two helper is they, uh, they exhibit the characteristics of, of uh, the helping nature of God. God is an ever-present help in time of trouble, this is a strong characteristic from God himself that God's put in you. So how do you experience God in light of that? I mean, I think it really has given me a heart of servant leadership. Just to, um, I don't know, just want to be the hands and feet mm. of God. and Just uh, be able to be there for people, to be able to support people. And, and it's really helped me even on the work side to um, being able to engage people and you know, being there for anything that they need or anything I see that they need. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it's really helped strengthen my relationship with God and it's something that I lean into. Mm. So Jeff, um, on behalf of the church and uh, to helpers everywhere, uh, thank you for, for bringing the, the helping side of who God is uh, to the body of Christ so we can see it all over the place. Churches can't work for sure. Uh, without type 2 helpers that are kind of just uh, buzzing around, wanting to know what can I do, how can I be helpful. And if you're a type 2 helper and you wonder, can we use you around here? <laughs> Come see me after the service today. There will be, we'll be a sign-up list. <laughs> there will be a sign-up list. So let's give it up for Jeff. So next we're going to move along and the, we're going to talk about the type 3 achiever in a moment. And... and 
Uh, the person that I've asked to come today to, to chat with us about what it means to be a type 3 achiever is uh, a person named Alana. Many of you probably have not met Alana. She's relatively new around here, but not brand new around here. We've had opportunity to have coffee and stuff, and I've gotten to know Alana a little bit, and didn't take long uh, being with Alana to discover that she's got very high goals and giving everything to kind of get to that place. And it didn't take long to figure out that Alana was a type three achiever. And I remember the morning I was teaching on it and she was sitting right there. And it's one of the most amazing things as a pastor, it's the thing that keeps getting me out of bed every week, is that when you see a light bulb come on on a Sunday morning and when it happens, it's, it's addictive. It just brings something and it's like, yeah, that's why I keep doing this. And so I remember seeing some stuff come on in that morning in you. And so we followed up about it and for sure found out that that's where Alana is. And so uh, Alana's new to Hillside. She is in medical school uh, right now here uh, in London. And it's been a joy getting to know, know her over the last few months. And now you're going to get to know her as well. So, so Alana, the teaching on the type 3 achiever uh, took us towards the biblical personality of the rich young ruler. So as I was kind of trying to unpack that and you were listening to it, what did you feel in the moment? What was something that came out of the character of that person that really just sat in your gut that you kind of like felt it was just God speaking to you? Uh, what was it in that story that really hit you at a core level? Um, I think it was how he like approached Jesus in the first place where he was like, how can I do it all? Like, what is it that I can do to, like, make this work? And also just kind of saying, like, you know, oh, okay, I have done that. Like, I could do this. Even if maybe you don't feel like you've done it all, you feel like you have to kind of put on this, like, certain image of, like, yes, I can do it. Like, even hmm. to, almost to convince yourself. And when he was talking to Jesus like that, I was like, interesting. That is something that I, maybe something bad that I do. Um, and then also the way that he really held on to his wealth. I feel that for myself, it's not necessarily that. It's more so, um, you know, like the things that I've maybe achieved in my life where I feel a lot of identity in that rather than in God. And that can be sometimes wow. a difficult thing to reframe, but something that is like part of my, um, what I related to in that story. Mm, that's a brave <laughs> statement. That's a brave statement to make. I appreciate that honesty because the type three achiever generally will kind of struggle reframing who they are in light of what I do totally. versus who I am, yeah. right, and who I am in Christ and, and who God's made me to be. Uh, but yet, the things that the type 3 achiever does, they're meaningful and beautiful and contributions to the world and all kinds of... She's in med school. She's training to be a doctor. So, so, it's, so those things are great things, but it's, it's, it's always keeping in check those pieces. And so that's super, super good to hear. So each of our types have this... Beauty and brokenness that kind of goes kind of hand in hand. The thing that makes us, you know, powerful and beautiful is also the thing that we got to guard against, that we don't kind of fall into a, a trap sometimes. So, so as you think about that, what's something in your type threeness? God's created you to be, by the way. I want to affirm that. All of you. That's who, who we are, right? It's a beautiful thing. But what is it that you're working hard to guard against? What's that thing? Um, I guess one of the big things is that it's, it's something that's rewarded a lot of the time to be an achiever. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of like, even when I was growing up, it was always reinforced, like, like do the best you can at everything all the time, which is really like, you can sometimes be bad at stuff and it's okay. And like, I'm trying to learn that now. <laughs> um, so like just doing things for the sake of doing them rather than doing them to like excel in, like at it, just like art and stuff. I'm not good at it, but I enjoy it. Mm. Um, and then also the other thing is I guard against um, showing like a vulnerable side to myself, which I'm doing today. Um, <laughs> but I, I tend to subconsciously, I think, present my best self all the time just because I'm doing that in my head to myself as well. Um, but it's really hard to be honest about when I'm struggling or like things in my life that have gone wrong or, you know, if I'm having a bad day, I won't really tell anyone until I've already found the solution, dealt with it, and then I've moved on and I'm like, oh, that happened, yeah. Like, so that's something that I'm working on letting people in when it's, when it's difficult, yeah. Amazing. What an insight. Um, 
I want to make a kind of a blanket statement for, for type 3 achievers because uh, I know lots of type 3 achieving folks and love lots of uh, type 3 achieving folks. Uh, it's okay to fail. Yeah. It's all right, you know, when you because the bar is always very, very high for a type 3 achiever. Yeah. It's up there. It's way, way up there. It's in the stratosphere somewhere. And falling short is okay uh, because it's in that, that kind of you can feel the love of God and feel the fact that you don't have to take all that pressure all of the time, right? Uh, and, so, and so I know that that's probably not an easy word for you to receive or those of you that are in that community to receive, but I think it's a necessary one um, in those places of brokenness. And, and we say failure, but it might never be failure. You know, it's just, oh, um, maybe my own expectations are sometimes a bit too high for my own self or whatever. It, it depends on the motive, right? So... So thank you for that. Last thing I want to ask is, like, how does this being a type 3 achiever affect the way you see God and your relationship to God? How do you, how do you unpack that a little bit? Um, I think it's one of those things where I have learned how to find God in the, like, mountains and valleys. Like, it's because there are some pretty exciting mountains. Like, I love what I do. I love connecting with my patients, and it makes me so feel so fulfilled. So being super busy or having to do all the, like, the work, I guess, to like get to that point and kind of be doing that, um, to me is where I kind of am able to meet with God and just be so grateful that like, wow, I get to be here. Like, this is my biggest dream. So I, I think I really like have been able to, in the achievements and even in the failures, to just be grateful that God's there kind of with me that I know I didn't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. So that's like a big, uh, yeah, that's a big one. So, so good. So I just want to summarize something you said. Knowing that in the achievements that I didn't do this alone wasn't me. It was me plus God. So, so good. So, so good. Let's give it up for Alana. All right. So uh, now we're going to move right along. And we're going to be chatting uh, with a person that now identifies with the traits of a type 4 individualist. And just to be honest, uh, of all these types that I'm going to unpack, I know that the type four will be the longest sermon for me. So last week for me was will be the longest sermon in this, that series because you folks are so beautifully complicated. We appreciate it. <laughs> and I didn't want to miss much because there's so much stuff wrapped up in the heart. And so uh, allow me, for those of you that don't know, uh, I want to introduce you to Steph. Steph's been around Hillside for a very long time before kind of Hillside was even Hillside, I, I think, right? So, but for the sake of many of you that are around here that are new, that wouldn't know Steph, I want to take a moment to introduce you to her today. So she is, uh, through her own confession, uh, and through what I know about Steph, a type four individualist through and through. There's no doubt uh, what her personality type is. And I've seen that in some areas of her um, creativity, uh, type 4s, generally speaking, are really creative folks in many different ways. And I remember one time I asked Steph if she would do something for us online to just give us a few uh, sentences of summary of a sermon that I did. And uh, I was like, next thing I know, on our Instagram feed, there was like a beautiful piece of art that she created. And I only asked for a two-sentence summary of what I said in a sermon for Instagram's sakes. And she creates this whole thing. And it was so beautiful that people from all over the place were like commenting on it. And that is uh, one of the beautiful sides of Steph's personality and certainly the type four personality for sure. So we're, we're very, very glad uh, that you're with us here. So, so, so the teaching on the type four uh, last week took us toward the biblical personality of the king, uh, shepherd, poet, musician, David. So uh, you were sitting right there, right behind Bella last week when I was teaching this, and I was kind of looking towards you yes. as I was teaching. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to see the reactions of some of the some of the fours that I know around here to see if they were angry with me, or to see if I was just somewhere on track, or to kind of see where it was going. So, so I was wa watching you there, and as that was kind of being unpacked, what were some of the moments where you just felt that God was speaking to you, or or something there where you really felt resonated with you or just opened some things up for you? What were you, what were you thinking? And let me phrase it this way. What were you feeling 
when you were sitting there everything last week. <laughs> um cuz we feel everything um i i think the first thing for me was how much i just i relate to um the psalms like hmm. if there's ever been a gift to a four that um is a jesus follower i would say in the bible it's the psalms like i'm going to read another one <laughs> but um my favorite one is psalm 55 and part of it talks about i think his struggle as a four because he says um my heart is sore pained within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me fearfulness and trembling come upon me and horror hath overwhelmed me and i said oh that i had the wings of a dove i would fly away and be at rest then i would wander off and remain in the wilderness um i would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest and he's not talking about a physical storm he's talking about the emotional kind of storm within him um and the overwhelming emotions it's not always fun to to feel all of these emotions that we feel um so david being an example of how to process them how to how to kind of get them a bit more outside of yourself using art um was kind of one of the first things that really hit me with what you were talking about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the psalm that you just read, like so many of the descriptive words in there are just very emotional words, yes. right? They unpack all kinds of different uh, emotions that are going on in, in David's life. And, and for sure, the psalms is a place that you can go to be really see how some of that stuff works. And so, um, again, the type fours amongst us, they are some of the most beautifully creative and biggest feeling people amongst us. And so what is the brokenness of that for you? So as, you come, as we talk about the beautiful parts, what are like the broken pieces for you when you kind of feel like you really feel the weight of your, your fourness? I, I would say there's maybe two parts of it. Uh, one is the kind of the dichotomy between being the individualist, like being unique and I'm different than everyone, also translates into there's something wrong about me that other people don't understand and they won't get. Um, like it, my, some of my roommates in university would call me freak and it was a joke and I actually, there's part of me that was like, yeah, I'm the freak. I'm the one that kind of stands out and um, I do things differently than everyone. I start the day by dancing in my room. And, um, but then on the other hand, it's like, they wouldn't call anyone else that they know a freak because it would be hurtful. And so um, like, part of me is hurt by that. So it's, sometimes it's, it's balancing it out in my head and saying, I can be unique and not completely broken and um, missing some component to myself. I think the other part is in terms of all of the emotions and thinking, um, like I have whole playlists that are, it actually is called foring for when I'm in a four mood and I need to feel the emotions that are kind of overwhelming me. So they, they're songs that will make me cry or make me, but, it, I think as a four myself, it's, it's a lot easier for me to feel negative emotions than to generate happy emotions. So I can sometimes kind of get down into a rabbit hole of um, negative emotions. And like you said last week, reminding myself that my emotions feel true to myself, but they're not necessarily the truth. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you about that, and it's not in the notes, and it's not something I sent you. Uh, but I was wondering about that even last week when I was unpacking it, you know, because I, I never want to delegitimize someone's emotions because God gave them to us and they're very real. And there are so many times when you're going to have an emotion that is actually going to be a descriptor of the truth that's happening in a moment. And so last week, as I was trying to unpack it and saying stuff like, hey, like, be careful with your emotions because lots of times your emotions aren't pointing towards the truth. I also want you to understand that there's lots of times that they are. Especially when you're a type four feeler, you know kind of how to discern through your emotions when you're healthy, right? Yeah. 
And so I just want to make sure that kind of lands in, in a good way that I didn't offend. No, it, and it was, it's a good reminder for, for us, um, or for myself at least. Um, and it's also, this series has been really good for me to be reminded of what is um, unique about every other number and how they look at me, not necessarily being um, judgmental, but just how they look at me, um, which has been something that uh, growing up in my family, my I've been called oversensitive. Um, and someone actually has said to me, can we just talk about something without you crying? Mm -hmm. So like, I think it's, and I would, honestly, I would love nothing more than to have an, an important conversation and not blubber my way through it, but it can be hard. And so I think um, being reminded of, of what is true and what isn't, um, especially in terms of what God says is true and what God says is true about me mm -hmm. um, is really important. Mm -hmm. I think Alana said that too. Like. Yeah. Um, so as you kind of frame your relationship with God in light of your, you know, your individualist and who you are, mm -hmm. how does that kind of frame the way you, you see your relationship with Christ? So um, for me, creativity has come into um, how I communicate with God quite a bit. Um, I, th I just said to another four, I think that God, knowing that we feel our emotions more than any other number, gave us an extra measure of creativity in a way to, as a way to kind of process those things. So when I get an opportunity to say, um, how are you processing this sermon? I, I'll draw it or I'll paint mm -hmm. it or I'll do some other creative. I joked with um, another four that I was going to come up here and do an interpretive dance about how I felt about the sermon series, but dance isn't my, it's, it's only because I had surgery recently. <laughs> Otherwise, I would. Um, yeah. Just a type two helper. He would help you dance. There you go. Here. Thank you. you and Alana's a doctor. I, she, could, I, like, she could help you. She, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think my orthopedist would be okay. very happy. Right. But, um, but I think, like, even when, when Tora um, came to me and said um, during the pandemic that we wanted a way to kind of um, end up the the doubt deconstruction kind of um, sermon series. And we came up with that um, mosaic idea. Like, honestly, that was me living out my best life as a believer, being able to show God my feelings about everything through something as um, beautiful as hearing plates smash and... Um, and then putting those pieces in place. Uh, I'm, I'm not as much worried about if the end product looks like how I had it in my head, although there are things that I won't show people because it's not good enough, but that's every artist's issue. Um, I think just having ways for, for number four feelers to, um, to express their emotions about who God is and, and how how sermons make us feel and, and how we're, we're what we're learning and um, really is, is going to be a, of a benefit to mm. the congregation, to the church family, and to the fours, I mm. think. So lots of truth packed in here, lots of uh, emotions packed in here, which are uh, beautiful to think about. So before I kind of wrap this up, I, I want you to kind of see one of the things that I'm trying to accomplish as we teach this series through. So type twos, threes, and fours will process major pieces from the heart, but in different ways, right? It's from the heart, but in different ways. And so if any of you out there aren't in the heart triad, but you're in a relationship in some way, a friend or spouse or whatever with someone in the heart triad, there's going to be moments where you're really not going to get it. And, uh, arguments and all that stuff can kind of come because you're processing something from, I'm, I'm a type one gut processor. It comes from the gut in the moment, it's discerned, let's do it. Uh, lots of facts, but not all of them, but the gut says go. And lots of times I won't land here. I remember one uh, decision I made in a church was around a department I was running and it was around, um, uh, it, it was a decision that would affect, uh, it would affect people, let's say it that way. 
And I went straight to what's the most efficient way to run this? Uh, what, what, what's the budget going to look like? And how does that work? And then secondarily, I thought about, I wonder how that's going to make people feel. And so this is kind of why we unpack this stuff. And so if you're in a relationship with someone and you process from the gut, and the person you're in a relationship with processes from the heart, there's going to be plenty of times that you're not going to see one thing the same way. And you know something? That's okay. That's actually called growing together. That's actually called maturing together and learning that, hey, you're not always right. There's someone else that comes has got a different opinion than you, and, and maybe, maybe they're right and you're wrong. It's, it's these pieces learning each other, and I think, you know, I want to kind of, uh, lots of ways we think that Christianity is just learning more about who God is, and certainly that is true. But learning about who we are, how we relate to each other, and how we relate to God is also super, super important. And so that's the driving theory behind why we're doing this. So let's give it up for Steph. And, and what I want to do before the worship team comes back to wrap this up, I just want to take a moment to just... Um, Affirm these folks, uh, because the body of Christ is a better place uh, because of the helpers, the achievers, and the individualists. So Jeff, thank you for, uh, if I'm sitting back there, I'm around somewhere, and you walk in sometimes 7.30 on Sunday morning. Shane, what is it you need? Thank you for being a helper. Uh, God bless you for that. And, but don't forget to help yourself. Don't forget to take that time in for yourself. God needs you to have that so you can help the rest of us. Alana, type three achiever. Girl, you go. Go for it. Like, climb that ladder and go for it. But it's always Alana plus Jesus. It's always God in you. I'm, never, I'm not doing this on my own thing. I'm not, it's, it's Jesus driving you to achieve these things. Why? Because you're helping so many people. And I hear that from your heart just... Having coffee with you and getting to know you a little bit is just, Alana, why do you want to do this? Because I just get joy at helping people. It's an amazing thing. So, girl, you go right to the top. Don't stop. God's created you that way. Go for it. And Steph, the type four individualist, creative feelers around here, boy, teach the rest of us how to get in touch with our heart, would you? A little bit more. Uh, and these moments where you feel free to express your emotions and creativity and that stuff, boy, we need that stuff. We do. Uh, and, and so thank you for bringing that part of who you are to the church, and please feel the fullness of your emotions. Please feel free to feel the fullness of your emotions inside the body of Christ. God gave you them, and in the name of Jesus... You're not a freak. In the name of Christ, you are who God made you to be. Beautifully, craftfully, fearfully, and wonderfully made. That's who you are. Receive that today. But don't cry. <laughs> so today, Jesus, we thank you for who these people are because you made them this way. And so, Lord, I just pray your special blessings on them today, Lord, and the pieces that they bring to us. God, we, we're just so, so thankful. We can't put it into words. And, Lord, as we look at them today, we see what it truly means to be made in the image of God. So diverse and beautiful and complicated and confusing. And, Lord, it's so beautiful. Thank you for these people today. And so, Lord, I pray for their hearts. God, that you would just guard their hearts and you would enlarge their hearts for the kingdom and for us and for all the people that they care for. And Lord, I pray for creative moments that would just come to help us, uh, data analytical type people, to kind of just bust into the things that we see and break us into a new way of thinking uh, when we need it. So Lord, I pray uh, that you would just do wild and crazy and amazing things through these folks. And Lord, I pray you just help them to help us feel a little bit more from the heart when maybe some of us gut and mind people think we've got it all figured out. So Lord, today your blessings on them. We thank you for them because they uh, show us your heart for us. And I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. All right.